What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and today I am excited to share with you what may be the very first hash rates from the RTX 5090. And if that kind of content sounds cool to you, do me a favor, smash that like button. And if you aren't subbed already, hopefully this is the video that earns your subscription. So before we get to hash rates, there is some preliminary data that I want to go over with you guys, courtesy of Linus Tech Tips, Gamers Nexus, and Hardware Canucks. Without their dedication to the PC gaming space, we probably wouldn't have insight into this information so early. And this gives us some important details about the RTX 5090, such as power consumption and heat management. Now, I know you're all here for the hash rates and the efficiency, but before we get to that, I want to take a look at some of the information that these guys have dropped in their recent videos reviewing the RTX 5090. Now, first up, I want to go over the bad news, and that is going to be the heat that is produced by these massive cards. This first screenshot is from Gamers Nexus, and this shows us that the RTX 5090 is pegging 90 degrees Celsius on the memory temps with a fan speed of 80%. Now, as far as the core is concerned, we're still sticking under the 80 degrees Celsius, so we're probably maxing out somewhere at around 74 degrees Celsius, which isn't terrible, but those 90 degree temps on the memory is not good at all. And when you consider how these GPUs are arranged in a server case blowing from one into the other, even though we all anticipate these cards being excellent at memory algos, the temps could very well be a significant problem. Now this next slide is courtesy of Hardware Canucks, and this is going to give us some insights on temperature as well as the fan decibel noise. So here you can see at 1440p, the RTX 5090 Founders Edition is hitting 67 degrees Celsius, while the 4090 Founders Edition is hitting 61 degrees Celsius. That's a temperature variance of 6 degrees. Now at 4K raster, we're looking at a difference of only 4 degrees, and on 4K with ray tracing on, we are looking at a difference of 6 degrees once again. Now I do believe these are core temps and not the memory temps, so keep that in mind. And as far as decibel levels are concerned, in order to keep the GPU at those temps, the 5090 is in fact louder than the RTX 4090 which may actually contradict some of the information that we got from Gamers Nexus as far as the decibel levels are concerned. This next chart comes to us from Linus Tech Tips, and this compares the RTX 4090 to the 5090. And as you can see up here, we're showing a difference of 10 to 11 degrees Celsius. Next up, we're going to take a look at idle power consumption. Now granted, I know most of you out there don't want your GPUs idling, but I think one of the reasons that most people are going to pick this card up is for large language models, AI compute, and rentals on vast and solid platforms. And we know with those platforms, there can be a significant amount of downtime. And when you have a lot of downtime, you do need to be concerned with idle power consumption. The RTX 5090 Founders Edition is coming in at second to last place, 46.16 watts. And when you compare that to the RTX 4090 at 28.54 watts, that is basically about double. Now sure, if you're only rocking one of these GPUs, that's not going to make a significant amount of difference, but if you have a farm full of these GPUs, that is certainly something to be concerned with. Next up, we got a variety of different games and the different power consumptions between the RTX 5090 and the 4090. So on average, the RTX 5090 is coming in about 100 watts more than the RTX 4090 when it comes to playing games in 4K. However, with 4K ray tracing on, we're looking at a difference of about 120 watts. And at 1440p, we're looking at a difference of roughly about 75 watts. So we know as a whole at this point that the RTX 5090 is going to have quite a bit more power consumption when playing games and when idle. And we also know that it is going to run extremely hot. But the bad news doesn't stop there. We have an article on Reddit saying that NVIDIA has removed the hotspot sensor data from the GeForce RTX 50 series GPUs. So according to this article from Video Cards, not only did they remove the hotspot temperature sensor on the 5090, but they did in fact confirm that most likely it will be on all the 50 series cards. Now when it comes to removing this sensor on a graphics card that uses 600 watts, 
I personally don't think this is a good idea, and you really got to ask yourself, why did NVIDIA decide to do that? Now, if you've watched my previous videos about speculating on the RTX 50 series performance when it comes to mining and AI workloads, money spent versus performance, I don't think this is going to be the card to run out and buy. But thanks to a community member, Mr. Millerman, he posted this screenshot in our Discord showing hash rates for the RTX 5090 thanks to NiceHash. So perhaps they got their hands on this RTX 5090, and this isn't just speculation, but it's going to be a little while before we find out. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they've got listed. So here I am comparing the RTX 5090 to the RTX 4090, and we can see on ETH hash, we are looking at 160 mega hash at 290 watts. On Nexa, we're looking at 365 mega hash at 400 watts. Blake 3, 7.8 giga hash at 410 watts. Zell hash 195 souls at 280 watts, Auto Lycos at 355 mega hash at 215 watts, and Kapow at 85 mega hash at 360 watts. Now you can see how that compares to the 4090 over here, but to simplify things, I went ahead and threw this into a spreadsheet. So here we've got Kapow, Nexa, ETH hash, Zell hash, Auto Lycos, and Blake 3. This is going to be the 4090, and this is going to be the 5090. And there's really two key takeaways from this chart. One is going to be the efficiency, and the other one is going to be the hash rate per dollar spent. If we come down to the bottom, we're going to compare them and subtract the difference. So when it comes to hash rate on the RTX 5090 versus the 4090, with Kapow specifically, we have increased roughly about 31%. On Nexa, we increased about 32%. ETH hash about 28%. Zellhash about 30%, Autolycos about 30%, and Blake 3 at about 23%. When it comes to efficiency, the RTX 5090 is in fact more efficient if these numbers are accurate. So on Kapow, it's about 18% more efficient. Nexa, about 16% more efficient. About 15% more efficient on ETHash. 16% more efficient on Zellhash. 16.5% more efficient on Ergo. And about 8% more efficient on Blake 3. But when it comes to the amount of money spent on an RTX 5090 versus a 4090, you are down about 21% when it comes to dollar per hash on Kapow, down about 20% on Nexa, 23% on ETHash, 22% on Zellhash, 21% on Ergo, and 26% on Blake3. So even though the RTX 5090 is potentially going to be using a lot more power than a 4090, it would appear as though it is going to be more efficient if these numbers are in fact true. Now, I'm not sure where NiceHash got these numbers from. It is a bit intriguing that they went ahead and posted them already. I would assume that NiceHash does have some deep ties, and if anybody were able to get their hands on it and test it for mining, it would probably be them. But we've only got about five more days until we actually have these cards in our hand, and perhaps these numbers are subject to change. But I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Do you think these numbers are accurate? And if you don't, what do you think is the accurate numbers? Let's get some guesses going for the 5090 releases. That's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, and I will see you on the next one.